So I guess this is episode 18. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We're going to go over some stuff. Uh, I know I said I'd try to make this a daily thing or whatever. I'm going to try to be more regular so you'll get regular updates through here. Uh, let's go ahead and start the show. You're listening to The Andrew Anderson Show, your weekly movie news and reviews. Uh, so anyway, welcome back to The Andrew Anderson Show. Uh, lots of great stuff happening, especially in the realm of comics. We've got Chuck Dixon. I did an interview with Chuck Dixon. Uh, my audio didn't record, so I'm going to edit it down and release it just where he's talking. We had a wonderful conversation about uh, writing, and I'm really sad that it didn't record. Uh, but I'll be working out the kinks. I'll be getting more people on the show to talk. You know, I've got a list of people that I want one on, and eventually they'll come on. I like this little Anchor app. It gets everything that we need done. I can do it on my phone. I can do it anywhere. I, you know, I've got a very simple setup right now that I'm using that sounds really good. But it's it's one of those things. Lots of great Indiegogos out there. Uh, Diversity in Comics just almost hit three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars for Jawbreakers. That that is a massive success. Uh, also, you have you know Ethan Van Skyver's Cyber Frog almost at two hundred thousand as of this recording. And. They're they're trailblazing, and I want and Chuck Dixon, Ravage All Men, you know, had just hit fifteen thousand. I I want to follow in their footsteps. They 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 crack the code, but I got to do it my way. I can't I can't just. You got to be unique. You got to be original. And I like just talking, but I don't like doing the filming and stuff. Like I can do it. It's you know, and there will be more videos on the YouTube, uh, but it's not going to be regular. So you can follow that. I'm going to talk about movies and comics and just all sorts of stuff and try to do as regular as I can because now I have the opportunity to with this. Some of the podcasts might be long. Some of them might be short. You know, you just you just never know. The longer ones are definitely going to be, uh, for sure, the interviews. I do believe the future of comics is going to be, right now, at least for the good creators... And with the Indiegogo and doing the artisanal comics like, like we're getting, uh, yes, you're going to pay a little bit higher price, but you're funding the production of the book. And I think it's a great time in comics. Ron and I are definitely going exploring this avenue for the Knox. We want to do it as a hardcover. Which, by the way, go to go to my Twitter at Andrew P. Anderson. Pinned to the top of the profile is my uh, email list. You click on it, you sign up, you can get a chance to win a free sketch from Run. We're going to we're gonna pick a winner, and they'll get a free sketch uh, from people who sign up. Uh, we're doing daily sketches with Ron to get people to sign up, to get people hyped up about the Knox, and all sorts of stuff. But definitely in the future, you look at the money these guys make, and I know some people are out there, and they're like, I want to do that. And so they launch it. They launch their project and they don't they're not successful because they just launch and they expect everyone to flock to it. No, you gotta be out there, you gotta hustle, you gotta advertise it. Like I said, the Knox is coming. Mitch Brettweiser, he's out there hustling right now, the Red Rooster, and I think I think he's going to do very well. Uh you gotta build a YouTube following, unfortunately. If you wanna if you wanna make the big bucks, you gotta go out there and you gotta be hungry. And you gotta prove that you want it. Uh, Ethan and Diversity in Comics, they paved the way. Others are saying, saying it. Uh, people are doing it. And I think I think it's great. I jumped on the Move the, wa- move the Needle bandwagon because I think, I think it's important. We need, to be doing, we need to be doing that. That's something that, that I feel like is very important. We got to have it done. And we, we need to move the needle in our favor. And you do it by talking to your fans, having interactions. That's what I like about the Anchor app is because you sign up for Anchor, you follow me, you can call in when I do the shows, or you can call in in between shows, and I'll play them, I'll respond. I'll try to respond to everybody that I can. I'm already responding to everybody that I can on Twitter. Uh, sometimes I'll retweet something, and I'll get involved in the conversation. The conversation uh, might not involve me, but someone's replying to me. Uh, I'll heart retweets i love talking to you guys i love talking about the books 
Uh, we got to move the needle in our favor, and that's that's what the movement's about. And there's lots of creators out there that are, are, are figuring this out, you know. Don't shit on your fans. Don't shit on the people who are going to buy your books. Talk to them. Engage them. Don't block. I think on my Twitter profile I have 16 people blocked, but they're all like porn bots and stuff like that. Uh, stuff that I didn't want to be seeing anyway. Uh, so there's, you know, I don't block fans. I don't mute. Uh, it's easier to ignore. And there's a lot of controversy out there right now. Magic Gate, Comics Gate. You know, we're we're out there. We're fighting to make good content. We want to make good content. I want to deliver good content to you guys. I want to make sure you guys are getting it. Uh, getting exactly what you want. And I want to give you your money's worth. Because if you're going to drop 30 bucks on my book to get a whole story, I want to make sure you get a great product. And I want to encourage that. I want to make sure we're doing that. I want to deliver that. My Twitter feed, I want to give you guys encouragement. I want to give you guys, show you guys cool things. Uh, we've got great books coming out from Guardian of the Knights. A lot of you guys have purchased Gears and Bones on Comixology. I know some of you guys went physical. Unfortunately, the physical runs were so printed so low that a lot of it's sold out. Uh, we, there might be a box or two somewhere in a warehouse, but I don't know which warehouse they're in. We're working. I'm trying to get a Gears and Bones one shot together for you guys so you guys can have a great physical story in your hands i'm working on the knocks as fast as i can uh with ron ron and i have a great idea for for the whole story we're gonna get that done i'm trying to team up with uh with ken perry again and get a one shot together for 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 ghost agents there's a lot of stuff in the works and like i've got my ongoing serial on amazon so there's a lot of really cool stuff in the works and i i want to be able to talk about that uh, but that's all coming. You know, I see these guys. I'm not going to lie. I am jealous. I am jealous of EVS. I am jealous of of Zach. Your boy Zach over at uh, Diversity in Comics for doing these numbers. Even Chuck Dixon. But it's inspiring to me to go out and build the audience like they have. That's the one thing. Like, when I talk talk to my editors and stuff about this, they go, yeah, but those that's that's them. That's what they built. You don't have that yet. I want that. So I'm working on building that. <clears throat> so anyway, let's move on to um, a fun topic. Uh, this this last week, uh, they announced uh, three new Kingsman movies. Well, technically two Kingsman movies. A Kingsman 3 and a Kingsman pre uh, prequel called uh, A Game of Foot or something like that. It's set in the 1900s. That's all we know about it. I'm super excited for both those movies. But they've also announced a Statesman spinoff. And a Kingsman television series. I'm excited for all this because I want a Kingsman universe. I want Kingsman to be like James Bond. But I want it to be its own thing. And we're on our way of getting that. Matthew Vaughn's a very good director. Very clever. Uh, he's also talked about... Eh, a kick-ass and hit-girl movie as well. I'm I'm not as excited about those. You know, I like both movies. But I feel like uh, the novelty of kick-ass is worn off. Whereas Kingsman, it's cool. It's stylish. It's what I want in a spy comic movie. You know, even then, it it could be the next James Bond franchise. I think, I think it's brilliant. You know, I'm super excited because I want to see where they go in the third one. The first one is set in the 1900s, uh, which is around the founding, which is where they founded the Kingsmen. They founded it in 1915 after World War One. They established that in the first movie. So I want to see them go through that. I want to see them establish that. I think that's going to be really, really good. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. And then a Statesman spinoff. Oh, man, I would love to write a Statesman comic book. I think that would be fun. You would have a lot of stuff going on. I would definitely write a Statesman comic book with uh, Whiskey and Tequila together. I think that would be like a prequel. 
that would be so much fun because you have tequila who's by the book and then you have whiskey who is not uh by the book and i think i think it's it'll be a lot of fun because you could do a mission set at the same time as the first one and then all of a sudden they're on the mission you know and they're fighting for each other's lives or you know maybe 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 tequila kills the original whiskey you know in that in that situation i think i think it'd be really really fun uh, <laughs> you could do it it it'd be amazing if you do it right you do it you could do it good uh i definitely think the statesman is is definitely going to be a fun movie And then let's talk about Solo now, uh, because I, I feel it needs to be talked about. Solo definitely was a better movie than Last Jedi. Was it good? I enjoyed it. No, it was not a good Star Wars movie. It was a good film. Ron Howard did the best that he could. Uh, they're out there now trying to blame it all on uh, on us that just want a good story. We don't... You know, I saw John Campia come out why he thinks uh, Kathleen Kennedy should be fired. He gave reasons uh, from a business standpoint that was good, but he denied uh, what EVS is saying in his Star Wars videos, and I want to address it. John, you're 100% correct about the the behind-the-scenes stuff. You know, you're doing a great job uh, addressing that. But when you tell your... when you tell Star Wars fans that they are wrong because they can identify forced diversity. We don't, we love Lando in Empire Strikes Back. We loved him in Return of the Jedi. We love Princess Leia killing, you know, Jabba the Hutt. You know, very diverse right there. Empowering. But when you force the diversity in there just to check off the t- check marks instead of creating a good character then that's when you have a problem a good character should be able to stand on their own and because of that you you call it toxicity when we demand better from people who should know better uh and i think that's wrong because you're shitting on half of the population let's not forget star wars is for little boys that's your target audience. Star Wars is for everyone. But your target audience is little boys. And you should be telling stories of heroism to them. Where men are men. You shouldn't be telling them, oh, men can be women, women can be men. That sort of stuff. And we're seeing that and we don't like it in our Star Wars. We, we just don't. Uh, you know, what tanked Solo? It's a combination of things. I think part of it had to do with John Kasdan coming out saying, oh, Lando's pansexual. Whatever that is. No one cares. Just tell us a good story. You had an opportunity to tell a good story. You forced diversity into it. Even with a straight white male lead in Solo, you did that on purpose. You made it bomb on purpose because you want to be able to say, see, straight white characters don't sell. Look at Rogue One. Well, I mean, Jyn Erso, you could buy Jyn Erso because she was trained as a soldier since a child. That was established. You know, we bought Jin Urso as, as this badass because you built her as a badass. She didn't feel like you were checking off a diversity check mark with her. Uh, that being said, there were a lot of problems with Rogue One. <sighs> Kathleen has this issue. Uh, and sometimes you get promoted. You do a job very well. And then sometimes you get promoted and you find out you're not very good at the job you got promoted to. And that's okay. You just need to recognize it after some time. Uh, There's going to be a lot of changes coming at Lucasfilm. I know Disney's not happy. Uh, There's a lot of stuff coming. And don't buy into the clickbait. Don't buy into any of that stuff. Uh, Wait till the official news drops. Because Stan Lee's even come out and called the Hollywood Reporter fake. Hollywood Reporter fake news. Like, I wouldn't even trust me when I break news on here. I wouldn't even trust trust that. I would say take it with a grain of salt. I can say they're planning a Kingsman movie, and I can talk about it because I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm super excited about that. Uh, 
I didn't need a Han Solo movie. I didn't want a Han Solo movie. I'm on the record as saying that. I enjoyed the Han Solo movie. But I don't think it was a good Star Wars movie. I, you know, I buy movies because I'm a completionist. I have to have every movie. So I will be buying Han Solo. I, you know, I love movies. I live for movies. I think they're great. I love comic books. And I love talking about them with you guys. So uh, join me when I do the next one. Hopefully it'll be tomorrow uh, or in a few days. Uh, I'm going to try to be as consistent as I can with these podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. Hey guys, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Andrew P. Anderson, on Instagram at Proof of Fire underscore 89, Snapchat at TAA Show. I don't update Snapchat as often as I should. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Andrew P. Anderson author. I post movie news and, uh, and my books and everything like that all on there. It's all linked together so you'll see everything. Just follow, like, and subscribe on everything. And uh, if you're listening to this on YouTube, go ahead, smash that subscribe button and hit the like button as well. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. The podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.